recording. I know that the ruling was that he must complete a D2 apprenticeship program or obtain a math license or two or three. But would it be appropriate with something like this to step back, to be consistent, to, to see if he qualifies due to equivalent experience and training? And I'm just wondering what I'm missing because he, I understand that he should have done the apprenticeship. I totally 1000% get that. And maybe that's a different issue than the fact that he's been working since 2013. So he's got 10 years of work and he took, a, um, he graduated from Norwich Technical High School. So I'm just wondering, is, is he not qualified due to that in and of itself or no? Can, can we yeah. um, can we just verify Anthony Belez? He says he has an S1 license. Can we just look him up and verify he has a license? Yeah, and I mentioned that before. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's who it states here. But, but in my conversation with him, he's been working in mass and and he has the equivalent and, and he can't be here to ask that question. So I guess I'm kind of asking, you know, for him. Um, but, but the problem is he doesn't have a license. Well, we'll yeah. Say, I, yeah, but what about anybody else coming from mass if they don't have well, a license? Can we stop I, here? Which letter are you talking yeah. about? The first one on the first PDF, the guy says, Anthony Belez, he has an S1 license and he's been working side by side with Scott. So can we just look up Anthony Belez? Right, I'm, do, I'm doing that right I'm doing that right now, Richard. I just can't go that fast. They don't go as fast as you. Yeah, easy. The problem I have here, and this is just me, in the letter from Anthony Velez, he says he's not been enrolled in the apprenticeship program because ESI is based out of Mass. And does that mean they don't have any refrigeration licenses in Massachusetts? I think that's a problem. No, they don't have until it's like 10 tons or more, then they require refrigeration licenses. It's either, okay. 10, or 15, it's either 10 or 15 tons or more of refrigeration and a license and law kicked in. Tony yeah, Velez but, has a license he, since 2008. He's got an S1. Right, but he's working at CS, Starbucks, Verizon, T-Mobile, Cumberland Farms. So this um, and he's that last home. guy since 2008, correct? He's had the S1 since 2008, and he had the S2 before that. And this kid is a full-time trade school grad. He gets one year credit for going to school, and all school-related instruction is considered done for an S2-type license. So my vote is to approve him to sit for the D2 exam. But he's got the additional two years of that. Um, work experience when that well if he wants to go for the s2 he's got to get registered yeah okay. i mean you know we if we bend he i understand but he's not going to stop at a d2 richard well that's up to him he doesn't have the work experience so far from the statements i see <laughs> and his employer gave him an opportunity he wants an opportunity to sit the d2 license i don't know why the kid for d1 i would approve him for the d2 Uh, where are you at with this thing? He has the education for D2, I would agree. Okay. I, 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 will, I won't give him a D1. I'll prove him for a D2. And if he upgrade down the road, he's got to go to, he's got to get registered. Right. Because he needs, he needs a different hands on experience to go for the S2. Well, he's but all right. At that, but he's not even asking for the S two. He's asking for the D one. So I'm no, just we're talking about turn. I, I'm not. I'm not, and I don't have an opinion either way. I'm just when he says to me, "Why can't I go for the D one?" I think the rule was here is in Paulette. You know, can correct me if I'm wrong. That 
above and beyond a qualifying for the journey person type, if they have another two years of work experience, then they're qualified for the contractor type. And I just want to be consistent. So is that a factor in this or no? I, I just don't understand why we're stopping at the D2. And, and if whatever the reason is, I just want to be able to let them know. Well, he's not even explaining he that he's working in a journey person capacity. He's just working with other people. But he and, has and pretend. In Massachusetts doesn't have a journeyman's license for him unless he gets the refrigeration license up there if he's working on systems over the frontage. So he hasn't but, really, I don't really see yet where he's shown, you know, journey person time. For all I know, they're always treating him as a helper because they also have helper classification up there. If I look at Paulette's as okay. employer, does the applicant have equivalent or comparable education? The licensed employer says he recommends him for the D2. So that's what he's been vouched for. Okay. So if he says, when can I go, when can I reapply? What about the D1? Um, what should I tell him? In two years. Okay. We're not, I, you know, okay. this is opening up a huge can of worms because the guy doesn't have any license. So what reciprocity right. would we have? Well, we don't really have That's any, what, we don't have clarification. What is actual, you know, working in a journey person capacity. That's his argument he's going to have to make. So maybe when he passes D, D2, he can elaborate on so-called journey person working independently as a journey person in Massachusetts. So when he passes the D2, he has the opportunity to send in a D1 and start from scratch, a new D1 application and start from scratch. As for consideration of two years of the waiver time, due to the fact that he has, he can establish proof that he's worked in the journey person capacity in another state. Right. Okay. The only I mean, dilemma I have, does he have gas experience? Well, that is a good question. But he went to full-time trade school, Brad, so he probably, he has it. This in-classroom rich school is one thing. Out in the field is different. Yeah. Well, that could I be. I think we're issue. stretching it. That could be. I understand where you're coming from. So. Brad, are you comfortable with the D2? This applicant has a proper education for a D2. All right, a D2 approved for denied the D1 is that he wants to change his application. Okay. Okay. And then, so I'm just writing it down tonight, D1 approved for the D2. Um, there is a somewhat similar, I had in my notes situation, I don't know if you want to jump <clears> in, <throat> Christian Rodriguez who was on the second page, um, you know, while we're talking about this type of situation, he, can we talk about that one for a minute? Would it make sense or you want to go right, right down the line? It's up to you. No, we'll get back to uh, Kisco, we'll back. but thank you. Okay, okay. Let's, let's uh, Michael Iferty, I believe is his name. And, um, Two one, we denied the S one approved for no E two with changing category. Also qualified to sit for the D one exam because he has a D. Is that correct, Richard? Hang on. So I just I, I, I was looking. I am for denied the, for the S one. I would approve him for the D one if he's had the D two for two years. I yeah, believe he already too. has been. So, and I don't see, he's still, I really don't see, I mean, he could be with local authority, but maybe all I did was chill water systems and refrigeration. He has one boiler certificate. And I thought- He's we, an operating- I, I thought we got extra information from local authority mm -hmm. fully, fully explaining their program, but- You know what? Um, Richard, you did, and I know what you're thinking of it was, I think it was for, what you're thinking of is another applicant that we have on this list by the last name of Saxon. And that is because 
I mean, he, the, Ipperty, however you say, is on this list because he, he requested that he, he wants to appeal the decision and he arrest, he requested to speak to a review panel. But there's also an underlying issue with the last guy that's, that is similar to the last guy um, by the name of Saxon, um, who is on one of the last pages, you know, that is similar in that we've got, um, that's probably what you're thinking of Richard, Steve Broderick sent in emails and he's trying to kind of make a case to, to explain why this guy, Derek Saxon, would like an OE2. And that's who you're thinking of. Yep. But the so thing I is, say this, I mean, so the curriculum outline at local authority sent in for whoever it was, it doesn't matter. It applies to anybody who completed their program. I thought that's what they sent in, yep. this whole explanation of their three year program. And it's under Saxon, yeah. Yep. Okay. But in the meantime, an operation. Yep. it's just for an OE2 class. It's not for an S class. Right, right. So on this guy here, Michael Iperti, my vote would be denied S1, approved for D1. Yes, I have no problem with that. Um, we already you? told him that he... So if you look at the last ruling just in, from February, denied S1 um, approved for the OE2 with a change of category, and he's also qualified for the D1. Correct. Okay, so th this this is where, this is what I need to know when somebody says, I'm appealing this decision, can I speak to somebody? And this may not be the people that, we're speak, that I'm speaking to right now. I, it, it, so at this point, do I just, I'm not sure what to do. No, you'll never be able to get this one with this, these qualifications. Forget it. Well, That's it. you know, I don't think you should really get that involved with these people. You should just give but them the answer. You emailing me and saying, can, can I have I, a talk to somebody? Can I finish I'm speaking? Sorry. I think what you should do is say, the last working group meeting approved you for the D1 or the OE2, whichever you choose, and tonight you for the S1. If you want the S1, you have to show proof of equivalent S2 apprenticeship completion and obtain the S2 first. Okay, so there's no avenue in which for him to talk to somebody. He can just send in more documentation and we'll take it up at the next meeting. Well, the dilemma is we were told that we're not allowed to do that. So, well, 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 they can always they can always send in more information. I don't think he has any more to send. He simply just wants to talk to somebody. But if he can't, he can't. I'll just well, tell him there's no avenue to speak to anybody else. I didn't know. I didn't yes. know they couldn't talk to anybody. I, didn't, I I don't know where that's coming from. But I have to check. This is Paula. Um, I know that we've had. Uh, remember the um, elevator case, Richard? Yeah. Um, that it was. <laughs> But he that applicant had gone before the full board and they denied it and then it went up to the commissioner. So yeah. I have to um, review the statutes and regs to see what the appeal process would be if someone is denied, if their application is denied, if there is one. So I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, okay. I'll take a look at that. And, but in the meantime, go ahead. No, go ahead. But in the meantime, we could approve this guy for the D1 or the OE2 if he chooses. And then see what he says. He might say he wants fine, you know? True. All right, so Paul, let you let me know. Yeah. I mean, yes. I'm looking at his email where he says, I'd rather, proceed, I'd rather proceed in that direction and appeal this decision. So I'll leave it up to somebody to let me know what you say to someone then. Yeah, can you forward me his, um, his email? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, let me, let me just get back to some things here. Richard, if I'm not mistaken, if we denied an application, they would appear before the entire board. We <clears throat> used to do that, Richard. Correct. I now know. we no longer do that, that because of the MOU? I don't know. That's what Paulette's got to look into because we were having people come before us on, the, on these meetings. Right. And then somewhere along the way, Ooh. Karen said, we're not allowed to do that no. anymore. And I didn't really grasp the whole PM thing. PM told me that the commissioner stated that we can't, that they're not to come before this meeting. This oh, is supposed to be so more of an informal type of thing. It was never meant for people to appear. But I, 
I just, I'm not saying they should or they shouldn't, but that leaves a big, to me, that leaves a big gaping hole. As much as I can have 15 conversations exactly. and that's it, they don't have anybody else in, you know, above this level to speak to to say, I want to appeal it. I mean, I yeah, let me just, I'll double check. And I think there is, I think there is an appeal before they can go before the board, but let me just, let me just double check. I think okay. that, that sounds think the, um, right. The commissioner might have gotten the impression that everybody that's applying to us is appearing right away. Right. That it hasn't been reviewed or denied, or we didn't suggest other license types or tell them what else they could send in to beef it up. So I think she got the impression a lot of people were appearing up at these meetings when they don't have to come at all because we might approve 99% of them, you know? So I, I think that was a miscommunication of some sort. So uh, let Paulette look into the what they could have the opportunity to do. Thank you. All right, but just so you're aware, Paul, that we used to do that. No, I understand. Because we didn't. And it, great. I, yep. I, I'm not sure where all of the rules are changing here, but we need to get a grasp on this because this is not going to end pretty. Okay. And so I don't, I don't recall seeing up. anything in the MOU that says that there's no anything about um, there not being an appeal to the board. So I will just double check, and I'll get back to everybody. In a working group, you mean? Yes. Right. All right. I can't pronounce this next one. Gasparovic. I don't know. Okay, Anthony Gasparovic has a New Jersey and two New York County license, and he wants an S1. He has Rockland County, Putnam County, and has a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering. And I'm not sure what the New Jersey license covers because we never, I don't recall getting any information on that one. Maybe it did come, but I haven't, I don't recall it. Yeah, the Rockland County one says air conditioning only. And then, I don't, so, Master HVAC in Putnam. I don't know, I don't know, that could be a warm air cool air license, like a D1. Um, Do we have in our approved list Putnam County HVAC journey person license is equivalent to the S2? Which one? Putnam County HVAC journey person license. Oh, is it is equivalent? Not with this previous. That's what we have on, on the list. Okay. I don't know why he sends us all this engineering crap. Um, how do I obtain a master plumbing mechanical trades license? Where is this from? Doesn't say where it's from. Yeah, yeah, uh, master yeah. plumbing. <clears throat> if that's from that's from Putnam where he where the application is included. Their HVAC refrigeration seven years of experience. Heating seven years of experience. He also is a professional engineer, Rich. Yeah, yeah. And the ones that I don't have any uh, knowledge on is, um, and we should try to find out, Karen, is Master HVAC contractor. What are their requirements? Some of these places could just be certificates. Right. You mean from Putnam? No. What am I missing? Other towns, other, you know, I don't know what New Jersey covers. Right, right. Yeah, New Jersey HVACR license, New Jersey, 2012. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully when we start getting more information out there, which it seems like we're making a lot of progress and it will say don't submit this application if you have an out-of-state license and you're not, and you need, you know, without, 
more information on your out of state license or it won't be processed. I mean, that's the next step of that. Well, I would approve them for the, for the uh, license. S1 or S2? S1. Is that now a requirement by DCP that we honor <clears throat> that? Well, we had already voted on that license type being acceptable to the what, Karen? S2 only? Yeah. It was a master's, and we said your what list is master's. It says Putnam County HVAC Journey Person License. Oh, 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 but well, this guy has a master's. Thanks, man. Rockland County definitely is limited to air conditioning, apparently. See, for the masters in Putnam County, we don't have a description of what the scope of work is, and we don't have it for New Jersey. It says how to obtain a master on the mechanical trace license on a document, but it doesn't say who, where that got cut and paste from. What, what jurisdiction? Oh, down below it says Putnam County out online. Yeah. 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 It says seven years experience just to sit for the exam. Any apprenticeship, any schooling requirements? I don't know. I wish I wish he would show some education. But he, you know, he probably spent all his time getting his master's of business administration for some reason. Yes, have a fireman in charge boiler license, but that's operating engineer type. Well, I think I would like to see education directly related to right. the S2, related to the S2 apprenticeship program. And is that primarily from New Jersey? From wherever the education was, yep. Well, he does have a Putnam County HVAC journey person's license. If he has a journey person license, that's an S2. Okay. And he does have a Putnam County master license. Okay. I mean, so we could deny the S1, approve him for the S2. But then you're, if you do that, then you're saying he does have proper school-related instruction. And, and uh, he just needs two years journey person's experience, which he definitely has from the paperwork that he showed here. So he should be approved for the S1.
Can we request additional information regarding New Jersey's requirements and classes? I don't think he's sure. far off. I just want to get some additional background. Yeah. Can we ask for that, Karen, from New Jersey? Yeah, I'll do that. Huh? I'll do that, yeah. All right, let's do that. And then we'll put him back on the next agenda. Okay. Okay, so he's currently denied. Well, he's tabled until the next meeting. Additional documentation on the license requirements for the state of New Jersey. That sound right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the next guy we have is Zachary Cochran. And Zachary wants an S1. He has a B3 and an S9. He has a Rhode Island pipe fitter, journeyman, master, sorry, Rhode Island RM1 refrigeration master, Massachusetts oil burner, and he went to Lincoln Tech. I don't see any additional classes to justify to go to an S2. I don't see um, any apprenticeship for an S2. I don't see the classes for an S2. Bob, uh, for clarification, Lincoln Tech is approved and all the classes that this gentleman took are under the guise okay. of an S2. So that's for clarification. Uh, that's that's good. Now, do we need a uh, apprenticeship? Because it looks like he's in business for himself. Whose license did he work under to go to the S2? And was he registered as an apprentice? Well, he's an S9 holder, right? Zachary's an S9 holder, which is the same yeah. as the S1, except for the limitation on the heat and the coolant side. Yeah. And, and it looks like he he's... He went through a full S2 school related instruction program. Mm -hmm. I just want to see where he's doing boilers, high pressure steam, et cetera. Well, I got, he's a gas service technician for anywhere from four to five years. He worked for Osterman, he worked for Suburban. He, for one year, not even one year, yeah, for a little over a year, he worked for 72 degrees in Baltic, Connecticut. He was a HVAC technician for in Webster, Massachusetts from 918 to 5, 2009. That was six months. That lasted a while. Not much. I, I, I don't see any anything in here indicating he would have any steam. I don't, I don't see anything I, either. I mean, and he might be surprised is that S9 is probably the largest system he would ever work on. I don't see what he's doing here. He got the B3 oil burner license. I mean, that shows he's worked on any size burners, presumably. But, um, and all these contractors that he worked for really don't show steam and boiler installations are, are all HVAC or, or propane companies. Uh, he's, got, yeah, he's, got I, a, he's got an interesting collection of licenses and credentials. As someone who has the same credentials and not, you know, from the director of apprenticeship standpoint, but from a craftsperson, I believe that this person would qualify for a D1, not an S for that matter. <clears throat> they have a D1 and an S9. He carries those two and drops his B3. He could work on pretty much anything. Am I right, Richard? Well, no, he doesn't need the D1. Well, the S9 covers them up to 35 ton um, air conditioning units for yeah. refrigeration. So he has a license that covers everything under the sun that an S1 would, except he can't work on any size boilers or steam system. Right. And he doesn't show any documentation from anything, even right. up his credentials, saying he ever had exposure doing uh, boiler systems in schools or boiler systems on uh, 
power plant or anything like that. I just don't see work experience here. That I agree with. Uh, you know, he might have by default have all the education, but yeah, I don't does. see. I do not see work experience for for large boiler heating systems. And neither do I. So from a craft license, I. from a life licensed craft person standpoint, he's got everything but the steam the steam boiler work for the S category. Right. But on the you know from the director of apprenticeship side, he does have all the education for an S license. So you know, right, I mean but, if, but he does if he, if he listed a company here that did large scale boiler systems, it'd be one thing, but you know. Well, the, the other thing, guys, is he's not registered in Connecticut for an S2. He needs one more year. Did you supposed to work under an S2 uh, um, an S1 license holder to get your license? Is that correct? Right, or have equivalent experience, but I don't I don't see where he has unlimited heating experience. That's what he would need. And I don't see it. He doesn't even list a company name that I recognize that does large scale heating systems, you know. Yeah. Austin, All right. So we have I would say lack of lack of on the job training, installing high pressure steam systems and large boilers, you know. Well, I think we need to deny him for two reasons lack of OJT and lack of apprenticeship or lack of having the S2 first. But he still needs the OJT on. on large heating systems. Right, but he needs someone, he need, he's supposed to be registered in Connecticut. Well, yeah, so to get his I, work experience, I, he's probably gonna have to go work for an S1 if that's what he really wants to do. Right, I mean, and, now we're letting people just because they want to do it? No, that's, that, that's a problem. So I have him down as denied. I'm, I'm the same way. I don't see the work experience needed. All right, so Karen, lack of OJT and lack of apprenticeship registration. Okay, Michael Gravel. If, hold on one second, please. If he wants to pursue it, what can he do? What can he send in? We're looking he for- He needs to get work experience doing large scale heating systems and high pressure steam systems. And he needs to be registered as an S2 apprentice. Right, if he wants to go out and acquire that experience. Ian, so if, if for some reason he came up with a letter saying that he he worked with a large scale heating systems and high pressure systems, he still wouldn't be able to be. For not less than two apprentice. years. Right, he has to have at least two years experience doing. So say he know, came up with that letter, he would be approved then without. Well, we'll have to read it, see no. what the dates and duties okay. are on it. We'll okay. have to read, read what system okay. he's talking about. Okay. And lack of uh, on-the-job okay. training and lack of registration. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Michael Gravel in Connecticut wants an S1. He has a S2 and a D2. Wants the time wave. Um, is there a hardship here that we missed? With Karen, when did he actually get his... Uh, S2 on 12, 20, and 21, like it says on the license? Yep. So he only has uh, maybe three months on the S2. Right. I would think he'd have to hold the S2 for at least one year. Then you can give him journey person time because he has a D2. I was going to say in the past, it had been counted in certain circumstances that the fact that he had he has got since two th he's been a journey person i know not as an s2 but he's been a journey person since 2008 and in the past that had counted for right only up to a certain uh, amount only up to a certain amount yeah. this this guy let's you got to read the letters afterwards okay and uh, i don't know if you guys seen it but to whom it may concern my name is michael gravel i'm working hard for hospital and i have a side business I want to take my business to the next level and make it full time. I recently took and passed the S2, currently in process of getting my CDL. I am aware that the state requires 
to wait for two years and you can go for a contractor <coughs> license, hoping I can get an exemption. I have held the D2 for 14 years and get for the D1. I don't see the hardship here. I think he's just working part of the system to get himself to go into business. Well, I would recommend he, I would recommend he's approved for the D1 exam. And if he holds his S2 works with as an S2 holder for at least two years, then we would reconsider letting him sit for the S1. Well, that's that's the law. no big deal. We we deny the S1 and you can get the S you can get the D1 if you would like. Okay, so I have him down as denied. Okay, so he's basically got to wait the full two years for the S2. I mean, to get the S1. That's what I meant. There's something else about this one that I can't put my finger on. And I don't know when he, or how he got approved for the S2, but I think we helped out on that one, and I'm not, I'm not reluctant to help out a little bit too much. Okay, David Matat from Massachusetts. He wants an SM2 and he has a mass license, unrestricted license in Massachusetts. Hang on, I gotta blow this picture up. For some reason it's not, I can barely read it. He was it. with the local, yeah, he was with the local union number 63. <clears throat> and Wait, he's completed proof. But he's a sheet metal and he's going applying for what? He's a licensed in Massachusetts for sheet metal worker and he wants an SM2 in Connecticut. Oh, all right. I got it. I have oh I have him as a <clears throat> I would approve that, him too. Is he, has un, he has an unrestricted one. Yeah. Are they equivalent, the mass sheet metal and our SM2? The unrestricted mass sheet metal journeyman's license is the same as our SM2. Okay. Yeah, it's it is. We have it on your um, equivalent license uh, sheet, Karen. Thank thing? you for putting that thing. Okay. All right. But it's got to be unrestricted. Okay, and Lisa just says mass sheet with metal license, so I will put unrestricted on there. But you're right, it is on the list. Because we have a limited residential one too, like mass. So. Okay. He's approved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. okay. Christian Rodriguez is from New York. He wants a D2. He has no license, no DOL, no apprenticeship, lack of school, he works for Mount Kisco Mechanical, and has several licenses. He's got well, schooling it, through Boise's. I, I know I'm not saying right. The New York, the kind of New York program, 300 yeah, hours. 300 hour course, air conditioning, refrigeration, and heating technology. So he's good for the D2 in my mind. Plus he got the Christian the Rodriguez. Pardon me? Yeah, I think it's the but last this, page. Oh, you know, you're right. I made a mistake. Well, wait a minute. The certified technician. Is that New York or Nate? Uh, no. That's that's the Nate approval, not New York. But I think it's the last it's the last page of his application. They do that a lot. They put the most important thing on the last page in the in It's the last page has the Boise's um, certificate right. for the three hundred hours. Right, but here's here's my dilemma here, okay? Mount Kisco has Westchester license, Westchester license, a Putnam license, a Rockland license, and the Connecticut license, so they know the rules. Why wasn't this kid registered? Registered for and what? And he has 20 Connecticut uh, uh, license. Well, he's in Bedford Hills, New York. Right. Well, then why does he need the Connecticut license? Because they work over the line. That's just over the line from us. Okay. Shouldn't he be registered if he's working in Connecticut? Well, we don't know he's working in Connecticut. 
he's showing his work experience here, and you have to presume it's from Mount Kisco, New York, Westchester and that's, County. That's one of the questions that I wanted to ask you guys as a group because it seems to be that there's it's getting convoluted with you know, and not just not just with this group, with with other groups that okay, this isn't right, and we know it's not right, and it's upsetting to everybody. And I'm not downplaying it that they did not get registered. However, if they have the equivalent experience and training, like this guy may, how are, how are we handling yeah. that? Are we, you know what I mean? Are we saying, okay, anyway, even though I'm, I'm not downplaying, but no, he was not registered, well, maybe he, sh he should have been. We've got some other scenarios like that coming up in the plumbing board too, and that's something that I'm confused about how we're handling that. Well, I think, well, uh, Rodriguez should be approved for the D2 exam based upon going through the tech school system and in Western and Southern Westchester OSI school system and his work experience equates to sitting for the D2 exam. All right, so then we have to deny the S1. Oh no, he wants the D2. Okay. All right. So you think we should approve him, Richard? I would have. I would. It's 300 hours. We're, uh, we're, two, we're 288, and, and plus he has work experience from a company out there. So, uh, What are your thoughts? Well, got, oh. Pardon? What are your thoughts? My thoughts? Yep. He's got 22,000 hours according to what he has, and he has, like Richard said, the 300 hours. I don't have a problem with the D. But I, I originally I wrote down it was an S, so I I wrote that incorrectly. But so I don't have a problem with that. But if he gets a Connecticut license and he decides he's going to do all his work in New York and not get registered in Connecticut, then I'm getting to have a problem because they're circumventing our requirements. I don't so, think the company so, wants yeah. to send him across the border unless he has a Connecticut license in his pocket. That's correct. And then once he has a Connecticut license, he wouldn't need to get registered, right? Is that and is that the point of what you're saying? Uh, if he, can he bypass decides it? to go, if he goes from a D two to an S two, he needs to have the registered apprentice because now he's complying oh, with Connecticut law. Right. It's a fine line, it's not fun. But he wouldn't get the S two that your... easily because we'd say we need we want to see the S two work experience and education. He has he may not he probably doesn't have it, so that wouldn't happen, right? Anyway, it's applying for the D2. I approve him for the D2. Todd, your thoughts? You agree with D2 as well, Bob? I do. All right. Me too. But but to get then again in the back of your mind, you got to remember if he goes for the S2, it's a problem. Well, you got you got, you're gonna you cross know. the bridge when it comes, right? So he's so everyone voted right. on the D2, right? Cross the bridge when it comes. The I gotta bridge. go, guys. I gotta go. I gotta right. take off too in 15 minutes. No, I have a meeting at one o'clock. I have one at 1 30. I have one at 1 30 with you too. So see you later. <laughs> bye, Bob. Bye, Todd. Bye, Janina. Bye, Karen. Bye. bye. All right. So Christian Rodriguez is approved. Yep. Okay, right. Michael Hughes. I approve him. Michael Hughes wants a G8. He, all the documentation appears to be in order. Yep. Yep. He's approved. Yep. yep. Okay. Levi Andrew wants a G8. Yeah. From Missouri. Same thing. They're from Sinbro. Richard, was Sinbro the company that we had that big lawsuit with many, many years ago? Easy. <laughs> Yeah, I had to go to the National Labor Relations Board. Oh, see, yeah, I'm Richard, there. remember that, Mr. Hurlburt? I hey, remember guys. that. Yeah. Hate yep. to be a jerk. We got a lot on our plate here, too, and I've got 30 minutes as well. Okay. Benjamin Noonan wants a G8. Yep. He's right. also approved. Yep. James Blanchett wants a G8. Yep. He has the documentation. I have him approved. Yep. Alex Benj wants a G8. 
He has documentation. I have him approved. And you'll notice, Richard, because you did all of this work, Sinbro is finally figuring it out. Well, they had a big, they had a big, uh, we went, it was quite a hassle, but they got all squared away. They almost, I, I never see them screw up anymore. Plus they have a furniture program in Connecticut, so. Thank you, Richard. Trevor Martin wants a G8, but we got no cover letter from anybody. Don't we need a cover letter? employer at all state construction for this he's got his certs let him go yeah he does have his cert and they signed off on it right yeah used to be okay uh, i got uh, i don't have a problem right. with it you can't pass the cert without having the work experience you don't just pick up a welder and do it the certification yeah all right, all right. dean Pell dean pelletier wants an oe2 has no license, has a letter from Rhode Island uh, as an operator. Uh, this this was uh, Pfizer's stuff or subcontractor or whatever. What are your thoughts on that? Well, thanks. Well, I think he could show us some school related instruction because I think if he was down at Pfizer and this Gosling guy they, they were going through Local 30, or they went through Jones Lang and LaSalle, or somebody that had a, a school-related instruction for this guy. I don't, I don't know why he should. He doesn't, you don't just learn this stuff. You know, he worked 4,000 hours. He must have something he's not showing us. What do you think, Tom? Well, he was in... I agree. Should, Let's should we ask for Yep. Yes, okay. we should ask He's him approved. for documentation proving his related instruction that is uh, that, co uh, that coincides with an OE2. <clears throat> right, right. All right. Okay. So he, he may very well be in trade school, Brad. He just forgot to attach his diploma. I don't know. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Re reconsideration Travis Townsend, <clears throat> Massachusetts. He wants a D1. He has a license, Rhode Island commercial contractor, a math RC, five year math apprenticeship completion, refrigeration, air conditioning, oil burners with local 537 JAC. Well, he has a mass refrigeration contract license. Yep. Yeah. What's he applying for? I got to go oh. back. Yeah. D1. I would approve him. Yeah. He took a star exam. Yeah. This guy. I mean, if he has a refrigeration contractor's license to pass, you don't even get, get one until you get 10 or 15 done systems. Yep. So he obviously is doing hard, hardcore stuff. Okay. You got him approved. All right. Thanks, Dad. Now, the only question I have, Rich, does this, his license and mass include gas? No, probably not. He should be applying. He could apply for the D3 if that's the case. But if he's with local 537, it may have very well included all. I know for a fact that included that. Because it's apprenticeship training program approved by the state of Mass, he says there. Okay. So you're comfortable, uh, Todd? Yeah, on that one, because I know that's that program, yes. That's perfect. You're so, you have such insight. James Renshaw wants an S3. Oh, God. Uh, uh, so <laughs> he's been registered. This expires in 6-30-2022. Why is he um, said it? We, interview, we interviewed him and his father. So what's being added here? Nothing. Well, the confirmation that he did get registered in the apprenticeship program. Oh. And it's it started July 1st of 2021, and it will run through June 30th of 2022. So my suggestion is that we will deny him the application. And in June, when he completes his apprenticeship uh, for that one year, we will approve him for the S3. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on here. And that's for... 
apprenticeship is two years in duration, right? Four. Right. That certificate of good standing is something that I issue to contractors that expire every single year. That does not mean that his yeah. apprenticeship ends at that point in time by any means. I I agree. He's only been on the books for he's only been on the books for six months. He got all right, so he's got two right. he's got two years of previous experience. Uh, he's got a year and a half left. All right. Okay. So I'll have good. him reapply in a year and a half and we'll approve him for the S4. No, I don't need to apply in a year and a half. As of his employer, complete his apprenticeship in a year and a half from now. All right. So, Todd, let me just go back a little bit. Yeah. He has the P1, okay? Okay. And he's had for quite a while. He's yeah. been working with his dad as a P1 and an S3, I believe. And the father wants to pull back and retire. He was never, he was never he registered as a... Uh, in, under an S4 category until July. I agree. I agree. Um, I mean, this is guys that's been there. He's been trying to do it. He came to I, he could continue to use his father's license and still do the work. I'm sure he's been doing the bulk of the work. So whatever you think uh, you guys would like to do I, I have to add something though. I'm sorry to interrupt. What I did was Isaiah, there was some sort of a mishap. Isaiah sent in a sent me an email with three attachments, and I gave you the three attachments, but I didn't do what I normally do. I normally copy and paste the body of the email itself, which oftentimes has some good information. So the email from Isaiah when he mailed in the three documents that I, I labeled Renshaw to, he says Hi, Karen, see attached and below. We had a misunderstanding in our office and replaced Renshaw Construction with Renshaw Plumbing and Heating. This automatically and incorrectly termed James Renshaw, termed James Renshaw for the apprenticeship program. Both companies use the same address and owner of Renshaw Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, reported his company to us acquiring Renshaw Construction. We now know that these have remained two separate companies and James Renshaw is registered with Renshaw Construction as an S4 apprentice. Sorry for any confusion. Okay. I don't know, didn't make much sense to me, but that <clears throat> seems like it was kind of important and I just realized I didn't put it with the, um, you know, with the attachments. That doesn't so, change, that, that, that doesn't okay. change the, does not change the scope that he still has a year and a half left. Okay. Right. Cool. So, All right. I just wanted to make sure. So, but he gets, but he, I mean, he's taken, uh, he has a P1, so he gets half credit for the education to go for the S4 because he already, by virtue of a plumbing license, you, half the courses are the same as the S4. I mean, we don't know if he signed up for any school related instruction. So are we going to uh, must complete the S4 apprenticeship program? Yeah. And then once he passes the S4 exam, we consider based upon a hardship waiving the two-year waiting period. We'll get through his S4 apprenticeship first. Right. What do you think, Bob? Okay, so he gets well. I just want to make sure that, you know, Todd is on something here. So the S4 program is how many years? Four. Two years? Four, Four. years. Four. Okay. You got and two years of credit two. towards that four. You got two years of credit towards that four years because of his education part. Yeah. It's yeah. been registered. It's been for six months, he's got a year and a half left. So if he completes the year and a half apprenticeship program, he can sit for the S4 exam, yep. and then he may apply before the board for a hardship waiver up to two years based upon his father's health. All right, I can live with that. Todd, are you comfortable with that? Yep. Not that I'm comfortable All with right. it. That's 
That's not that I'm comfortable with it. That's state law. All right. So he's denied. Thank you. All right. Derek Saxon is a um, repeat. He still wants to go uh, for his S2. I believe that we denied him that. And the problem with him, all he's done is taken the OE2 classes. <clears throat> Yeah, but it says here he wants to switch it to the D2 from the S2. Correct. Correct. But is it a D2? Should it be a D4? Because he's well, working big. This is the one where I needed the curriculum from Local 30. Yeah. They actually isn't that, said. Karen, isn't that what he sent us? What was your question? I was reading. Well, this is a local 30 issue, and I thought, uh, what's his name, Broadwick, emailed you or sent you their, their break, the content areas of their program so we could take a look at it. Yeah, he they did. They did. It's in the app. Yeah, it got, oh, sent yeah. Over. it got sent over to you. The there's an email that says, I don't um, see it. well, you got Saxon 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's Saxon 3. It's four, uh, oh. 40, 45 pages. Hang on. Saxon three, I don't have that. Let me see. Oh, I got Saxon one and two. So it must be the next email. Yep. I probably had to go to the next one. Yeah. All right, hang on. I'm a little, oh yeah, three and four, good gravy. Um, oh, wow. So does this have propane in it? Well, it probably does, mm -hmm. actually. Oil heat, gas okay. heat. Oh, it does have gas heat, Bob. Yeah, but it only consists of 441 total hours is what he's got. But he only wants the D E2 at this point, which is 288. Correct. Yeah, whoa, whoa, let's not split hairs on the educational requirements. The educational requirements are not a steadfast 144 hours. Federal regulation stipulates may be a minimum threshold of 144, not a positive one. This is subject to collective bargaining. Therefore, related instruction is related instruction under my regulations. It doesn't state that for any purposes for licensure in the state of Connecticut, it shall be no less than 144 hours. I want to be very clear about that. Well, this okay. guy has plenty of hours. Yep. And he has commercial building cooling systems, HVAC fundamentals. I think it has a lot of education in here for a detail. So Bob, Bob, for clarification on the folks that come out of Local 30, by seeing this syllabus, knowing the program, it is my, from a director of the apprenticeship standpoint, an, an individual would be, in my opinion, eligible for an OE2 and no more yeah. than a D, no more than a D two at any given point. I don't think that I would really be comfortable in an S two unless they have any ancillary experience outside of doing this. Um, because I if, agree. you know, if they're working in a building operating the big boilers or the big chillers, I get that. But also, part of their work will be outside of the plant, probably taking care of small splits and small rooftops, so on and so forth. So it's really, there's no question in my mind, the possibilities of the scope of D2, but S, I would be maybe amenable to an S4 possibility, but probably not in the S2 category. Does that sound fair to you? Oh, more than fair, Tom. I, I have concerns with the OE2 program and people thinking that they can get to an S2. It's, it's not the same. I share that same sentiment. I absolutely share that same sentiment. I think D... D is a cutoff, S4 possibly, depending on scope of what they did while they were in the employee, as in, you know, you know, under this organization. You know, if they're out there changing stream traps and vacuum vapor condensate systems and so on and so forth, uh, as part of plant operations, that might be something to consider for S4. But I think, you know, maybe we make a, I think a recommendation of Department of Consumer Protection for licensure purposes is anybody that comes out of here, out of this program, with a certificate of completion of apprenticeship, would be eligible for 
not either or, but my opinion, both OE2 and D2. Yeah. yeah. And to, to tag, and, and again, go ahead. Um, and, well, and again, Todd, I think Connecticut has the highest requirements and we put out a lot more clarity than some of the other stuff from other states that are coming in. Yeah. So um, I, I I have no problem with him doing the D2. And after that, then additional information and experience would be required and documentation associated with it. So, um, so he's changed his application from an S2 to a D2 and uh, we can approve him for that. Anybody have a problem with that? No, for a D2, he's approved. Okay, sounds good. All right. And just just uh, for per just I guess for, we're all set. Hold just on, for future Karen purposes. Hey guys, Steve, I'm trying to talk as quickly as I can. It looks like so what we just did was we just kind of said, well, maybe we can just make it a automatic thing that if they come from this program and they apply for a D2, maybe we should we should do something going forward with that. I'm just saying that if that gets dropped right now, then that will never happen, which will waste time in the future. So I will make a note that maybe at some point we can discuss this because this will save time rather than going because this happens often. That if they have this program, they go for the D2 instead of rehashing it. And also it looks like Steve Broderick is trying to get to that point. He's actually asking in this email, when you get time, can we arrange a meeting with Todd Burge? Yada yada, he CC'd Richard. So I'm just saying it might be something that, that we should follow up on in order to help us streamline to say in this scenario, then go right for the detail. Bob, you want to run that by your board or you just want to make a decision that that's how we're going? It's up to you. No, no I'm not making that decision without my board. And also to Karen, um, you need just to start for a starter with this local 30. I think you need to send him or advise him to take a look at the curriculums, you know, for our, our license categories. That way they will know and have it, you know, the S2 or whatever. Right, right. I'm just addressing yep. his email to me that he wants to meet with you guys and talk yeah. about this. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. But I'm thinking um, if he had the information beforehand, he could look at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, and I know, I mean, right. I'll just make note of that and I'll email later, but what I need to know for Renshaw, he's got it, he must complete the S4 apprenticeship. What again does he need to do for the S, after he completes the S4 apprenticeship and he obtains the S4, he can send in another application for the S3 and he will be what, automatically approved? Yeah, not... when, he, when he completes the S4 apprenticeship program, he, he can be approved to sit for the S4. When he pass, has proved, when he passes that exam, he could reapply to the board for the S3 and ask for a waiver of the two year waiting period based upon the hardship of his father's health. So we're just saying he can reapply for the S3. We're not saying he's not, he's gonna be automatically approved for the S3. We're, we're saying he's welcome to reapply for the S3. Once he passes S4. the S4, okay. he can reapply for the S3 and attach a letter explaining the hardship of his father's health okay. and, the, and the working group will consider waiving the two year waiting period. Consider there's just a big difference between automatic and we'll consider. Okay, I got it. All right. All right. Another quick question for everybody. You know, when we get people that have other out-of-state licenses, is anybody aware if they are just automatically issued or are they having to take a test and an exam? <clears throat> Well, that's why we got to get there. We asked the applicants to send it in the copy of the law of how the license is obtained. Okay, and does PSI do any other testing in any other states like they do in Connecticut? Yeah. Well, they well, yeah, they, they do, do, but they don't have copies of the laws or whatever. They just go by the state's parameters as to who can be approved. Are the exams right. similar to Connecticut? I'm just trying to find out because if PSI exam is used in Connecticut and it's used in New Jersey, then we have credibility. Well, we'll have to look into that. But. And what would be really cool is if we could get somebody, whether a temp or a legal person or staff or something, so I, somebody could be busy for like three months and just take all of this take the equivalency, look at all these other states and just draw it up and it would save so much time here. But we, that's, I guess, can't happen. So we're here over and over again going, what's for New Jersey? What's for this? What's for that one? 
when if we just had the manpower, which is unfortunate, it, it could just be made so much easier because if we had one person to focus on, focus on just doing this one project, it would be awesome. You're right, Karen. And uh, it would be nice if we had that luxury or the financial luxury, but you're doing a great job. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. And it would be nice time. if I had a beach house in the Bahamas. Okay. I understand I that. I really get I it. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>